Hi everyone, it's been a while since I made a tech video and since I'm sick at the moment and can't join operations I figured I'd take this as an opportunity to show you what goes into making my videos every day. Now I recently had a hard drive fail on me. This hard drive was given to me, it was already used and to be fair I'm not using it in the way it was designed to be used and I'll explain that soon. So anyway the hard drive failed, uh, I'm using two hard drives in this network storage device. The idea is that they both mirror each other so that if one fails you don't lose all your data but you do have to replace the drive that failed. Now I was invited to an event by Seagate and when I was talking to them I mentioned I had a failed hard drive and they asked okay what were you using the hard drive for? So I explained to them that I have network cameras like this that are recording to this. Uh, this is from HIK Vision, this is my favorite brand of network cameras, security cameras. I highly recommend this brand. Uh, this specific one has Wi-Fi, has a microphone, has infrared for night vision, it also has a PIR sensor which can be a little bit more accurate than using a like software based movement detection. Uh, so this is really my favorite camera, it connects to your wireless network or you can plug in the network cable and it records to your network storage or you can record to an SD card, micro SD card. So I told them I'm using security cameras that record to this. I told them I'm also monitoring public cameras, uh, having them recorded to this so that I can do like statistical analysis, like traffic and stuff like that. It's just something I'm playing with. Um, so I've got all of these data being written to the drives constantly, and this is running 24 seven. Now this hard drive here is designed for desktop use, which means typically around eight hours a day and you're doing reading and writing. It's not designed for a constant writing of so much data 24 hours a day. So not only was this a used drive, but I was abusing it because it's really not designed for that. So they said what you really need is something like the Skyhawk drive. They actually gave this to me. Imagine that six terabyte hard drive they gave this to me. So they said what you need is something like this. This is one of our new ones, Skyhawk for surveillance. Now this is designed specifically for writing lots of data, especially from cameras. It can handle, I think they set up to 64 HD cameras simultaneously writing to this drive. Imagine that, 64 streams. Um, so it's designed for a high write and not so much for read. This desktop drive is maybe 50-50 reading and writing. This is more like 90% writing, 10% read. Uh, so this is the point, and actually I knew this to be honest, but since this drive was given to me, I thought, well, I'll just use it and hopefully it won't break. Unfortunately it did break, um, but I knew already there are different types of hard drives for different types of jobs. I've got one of their leaflets here, for example, so you can see they've got the green, the red, and the blue. Uh, Barracuda, Iron Wolf, and Skyhawk. So your green ones are designed for your desktop computers, uh, your gamers, stuff like that. Your red ones, the Iron Wolf, they're designed for NAS, like this. Although I'm using it a little bit differently from other people because I'm actually writing data most of the time, not so much reading, whereas most people would use their NAS for like streaming movies and stuff like that to their TV. So that's when you might use an Iron Wolf. And then you have the Skyhawk, which is designed specifically for network cameras or any kind of surveillance operation. So for me, the meeting was very interesting. In fact, I should have done it as a live stream because we spoke for about two hours about different hard drives, like those ones with the SSD inside, you know, the hybrid ones. We also spoke about their data recovery system. Uh, it's called Rescue Data Recovery. They do physical recovery, so if your disk breaks, that was really interesting actually to hear about how they do that, how long it takes, about the process of supplying you with a temporary hard drive in the meantime, and all this kind of stuff. Very interesting. Maybe that's something we can do in the future if anyone's interested. So at least now I'm using the right hard drive for the job, the Skyhawk surveillance drive. It might be a little bit more expensive than a desktop level drive, but at least it's not going to fail and that's the most important thing. Now of course aside from the network cameras and the public cameras that I'm saving here, I'm also storing my daily footage from this camera. So what camera am I using? This is the Canon G7X. Let me take it out of this little case here to get a better look at it, Cam Canon G7X. Now, what do I have on top? A lot of people ask me about this. It used to be a little bit taller, but I trimmed it back. This is basically just a wind filter. So these are the microphones here. When the wind comes over the top, this just makes sure you don't get that annoying noise on top. So it looks a, bit, a little bit funny, but it does a very good job. Um, as for the camera itself, it's very, very high quality. It's very small, also you can see that. Some people ask, why don't you use a bigger camera, DSLR, you can get better footage. Maybe it would be a little bit better but I would have the hassle of carrying around a bigger camera and the bigger your camera the more attention you get and that's not good. If you have a small camera like this you can get lots of good footage and nobody really pays attention to it. So 
smaller camera is better for me. I have the flip screen, so if I want to do selfie mode like that, I can easily do it. So very good camera, is my favorite camera. Um, as for storage, I'm using Transcend SD cards. I used to use SanDisk, but honestly I got so tired of my SanDisk cards. They all broke, they all became corrupted, they all became unusable within like a year. Yes, there's a warranty service, but it's not very easy in my experience to get them replaced. So nowadays I'm using Transcend like these. They're just 64 gig. There are bigger cards available now, but these work for me, so why buy more? Um, <clears throat> as for the batteries, of course, I carry around spare batteries. I have the genuine Canon batteries. I have two of those. I also have generic like this two of these uh, the generics don't last as long and they don't correctly report how much battery is remaining so you could be recording something it says full battery then all of a sudden it cuts out and if it cuts out during a recording you could lose a footage so it's a little bit dangerous using these generic batteries but you know these batteries are so so expensive they're genuine ones so the first thing I would do when I get home is take out the memory card, connect it to my network storage, copy over the footage, and that could be anywhere from 15 to 20 gigabytes a day, so quite a lot of storage. Now in many of my videos you would have seen this microphone here that I'm holding near other people while they talk. So the camera is here, I stretch my arm out, hold the microphone close to them, the closer the microphone the better the audio. Um, the microphone on the camera isn't amazing, it's okay if you're talking very close, like if I'm holding it like this and my mouth's here and I'm talking, very good quality but as you get further away very bad quality now I can't remember the exact model number of this but I'll overlay it on the video now there are good things and bad things about this the good thing is it has a built-in battery recharges by USB so when I get home I can plug it in it recharges and it's super quick to recharge so even if I forgot to recharge it I can connect it to a power bank for like 10 minutes on the way to wherever I'm going and then it's going to be good for hours and hours so very quick charging very good battery life built-in storage I think on my settings it can record about 40 hours of audio just using the built-in uh, storage so that's pretty good it also takes a micro SD card if you want to expand it screen is very nice also let me turn that on so this is the screen you can see it's very clear the options are very simple to navigate very easy to use now I said there are good things and bad things about this well ultimately it's the audio quality I also had a Zoom H1 audio recorder and the quality on that was amazing the voice was amazing on this it's okay it's good enough um, considering the price of this I think the audio quality should be better it might be because microphones are so small I don't know the specifics but it's not quite as good as I hoped but considering how small it is how convenient it is how fast it charges the really nice screen and everything like that I'm happy with it would I like the audio quality to be better yes but it's good enough now some of you might be thinking well if you have a camera and you have a microphone how do they connect? Well, no, there's no Wi-Fi, there's no Bluetooth, there's nothing like that. They're completely independent, which means later you have to join them together in software. Now, that is most of the time very easy. You just drop your sound file, you drop your video file, and the software automatically joins them together. But sometimes, this rarely happens, but sometimes when you try to join them together, it just doesn't work. And then you have to spend lots of time trying to cut them together, and you could spend hours doing that. So, <laughs> It's not perfect, but most of the time it works and it's not too difficult. Now for video editing, I use a MacBook Air from 2013. It's a little bit old, but it still works very well. You can see it's got a few dents here and here and up here, and even on the bottom it's got a few. Some of these were me, some of them were other people. Uh, actually, I'm amazed that the glass hasn't broken because if you look here, you can see that this one's pretty heavy dink there and over here the same it's got a pretty big notch smashed into it um, I try to look after it but you know if you're using a laptop every day and you're doing so much work on it of course it's gonna get a few dings here and there right. now before I open my editing video let's make a little video so I press record on the camera record on the microphone and then move it around test 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 I'll move the microphone closer to my mouth test 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 so in that point you should see that it's louder when it's closer to my mouth now it's further away it'll be quieter so let's stop the recording on the camera stop the recording on the microphone and connect them to the computer so here's my editing software Final Cut Pro you can see that I've got the memory card plugged into the computer I edit directly from the memory card because I don't have enough storage on the computer itself I'm using a Bluetooth speaker because my laptop speakers are broken so here's our two files this one is from the camera this one is from the external Sony microphone we select both of them right click synchronize 
press OK, it does some magic to work out how to join them together. Um, because if you did that manually, it'd be very difficult to get the timing right. So we put that on our timeline, expand audio component, zoom in, and you can see we've got two different waveforms for the audio. One is from the camera, one is from the microphone. So let's start with this bit here. If I mute the external microphone and we just listen to the camera, listen to this. From closer to my mouth, test, 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 test. So in that... Okay, now we'll go back and we're bringing the external microphone and we'll mute the camera. I'll move the microphone closer to my mouth. Test, 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 test. And as you heard there, because this microphone was close to my mouth, it was much louder. So you can adjust those two channels. Um, so typically it would be my voice on the camera and then someone else's voice on this. Um, so that's the basic idea of how I put together the audio. But one thing people often ask me is how do you blur the faces? So let me set up an example. So this guy here is a cameraman for GMA. Let's imagine that I wanted to blur him. Let's pretend that he'd actually been caught riding a motorcycle without a helmet or something like that, and we wanted to blur his face. Well, the difficult thing is that he's moving. So let me just zoom in on him. I hope he doesn't mind me using him as an example here. He's uh, on the operations pretty much every day. So the first thing we do is carry over a sensor effect. Then we're gonna resize it just to cover his face. And instead of pixelated, we want it to be blurred. Now 100% blur is overkill, it just looks really bad, you can't even make out that it's a head anymore. So we could lower that down to say something like 30%, that's better, now you can see there's actually a head under there. Now the problem is, if we zoom out, let's go to 75%, if I play the video, once he walks, obviously it's no good anymore. So what we have to do is go up here, add a keyframe, and now we can move it forward a little bit, and then we can move the blur, move it forward a little bit, move the blur, move it forward a little bit, move the blur and so on. Now he's walking quite slowly so this is very easy, I can jump ahead like many many frames but if someone's walking fast or if a vehicle's moving you actually have to go through frame by frame and it can take a very long time so let's just keep moving forward with this and try and blur his face for a while. Okay so we'll cut it there, well let's test that footage out. Crossing, you have to give way when you're turning. And there you go, for those few seconds we managed to blur his face. Now that's just a few seconds and it's just one person that's moving slowly. Imagine when you have to blur a license plate, a conduction sticker and a face and if they've got someone else with them that's another face and all of these things are moving independently. If the camera's moving, if the person's moving, uh, it can really be complex. So blurring is what takes a very very long time. Now there are plugins where you can select a certain object or a color or something like that and it will track it around but they're just not very accurate in my experience. I've tried various different ones, paid ones, free ones, trials, um, they're just not very reliable and you might spend more time going through and cleaning it up than just doing it this way in the first place. Yes it takes a lot of time but it's accurate, it's reliable, you don't have to worry that it might miss a certain frame or if somebody walks in front of someone else it then loses its target. Uh, so yeah, manually is the way that I do it. Now after I've edited the video I have to upload it to Facebook and to YouTube and for that I actually use my cell phone. I use a Globe prepaid SIM card and it costs 5 pesos per 15 minutes. The reason I do that is it's LTE, it's very very fast to upload. I can upload a 1.5 gig video in about 10 minutes. Sometimes it takes longer if there's rain or something like that, it could take 30 minutes but if I did that on my DSL connection it would just take forever and that's when it's actually working, thanks PODT. Anyway, I use Globe LTE to upload. So I think that pretty much sums up everything, that's how I make my videos, that's how I edit my videos, that's how I store my videos. I do store all of the footage, eventually I might have to get rid of some of it as I fill up those drives but yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.